I have drawn out my image. I've traced it onto Canson Mitian pastel paper. Any kind of multimedia paper will work well. Any kind of pastel paper you choose to use will work well. This is the photograph. You attended my class. You have a copy of it. It is a sandhill crane in front of a brick wall. This is photoshopped. I added the shrubbery and I added the bird and it's a brick. This is the back of my complex. Now, I am using Faber-Castell soft, uh, it's called mini petite. Yeah, they're half, they're half sticks. There are 24 colors. I will not be using 24 colors. I never use 24 colors. That's just way too much for me. I will be using a red. I will be using a bright blue. I will be using yellow, yellow green, dark green, and I will be using um, orange. And for the bird, we're using the okra and, of course, the red. Oops. And um, I need the black. And I also have a black charcoal pencil for the eyes and some fine detailing. Put that there. And I have a blending stump. Whoops. <laughs> cotton swabs, which I dropped on the floor. Ordinary cotton swab. You may also use your fingers. Uh, you may use any blending tool. You can use paper towels or, or Kleenex, whatever you prefer to use. That's up to you. Let's set these to the right. And I'm going to put those pencils out of the way, those charcoals out of the way on this side, just in case. Um, I might want something. I'm going to start in the back and come forward. Oh, I also forgot. I'll be using white. for the clouds and for some highlighting. I'm starting in the back and I'm working forward and building up. Uh, first the sky and the clouds, then the shrubbery, then the wall, then the mulch, then the grass, and then the bird. The bird set up above I'm trying to make sure I have the lighting correct for when I start this with you. I think that's a nicer light. That's a daylight. Okay. I'm going to move over just a tad and bring in the bring in the blue. I'm going to use my finger to blend that in. I'm using the rough side of the paper, and while I prefer to use the smooth myself, I'm using the rough side of the paper so that I'll be able to build up more layers. 
Um, the more texture on the paper, the more layers of the pastel you can place. I don't know that I'm actually going to need to put that much. But one never knows. Maybe in some instances I'll need to do four or five layers. some blues, just patches of light blue uh, when I'm doing the shrubs so that I'll go over the blue, but I'll leave patches of the blue showing through some of the grass. And I'm going to wipe off my fingers and I'm going to get one of my Moist towelettes and wipe off my fingers because I don't want all that blue to end up on the clouds. There will be some, but I don't want all of that to end up. Let me throw that away. Uh, supplies are listed in the description below. And of course, as always, you may use any, any pastels that you like. And I'm overlapping the blue and bringing the white on. It's a very small piece of pastel. You just keep using the pastel until they are used up completely. Um, small pieces can be used for doing fine detailing. I'm overlapping the blue so that I can create some shadow along the <laughs> along the edge. You know that the clouds are not pure white. There are shadow areas on them. I'm going to come back here with a cotton swab and blend a bit of that in to make more shadow. And do the same over here. want some of that cloud to show through. Okay, we'll come back with my cloud again. And I want light edges. Some of the areas is where the sun comes through. So I have the sky done and I have the clouds done. Now I'm going to be working with the shrubbery and small trees that are behind the wall. I'm using the darker green 
and I'm going to bring it in to areas of the greatest shadow. And I will bring in the lighter green. What I'm essentially doing right now is blocking in I'm going to bring in my fingers and I'm going to blend. And it may seem that I'm going to be losing all the definition that I'd wanted for the shrubbery, but what I'm doing, as I said, is blocking in. I want the background to be full. I don't want gaps except for some on the clouds. Now I'm going to get myself another one of those moist towelettes, cotton swabs, cotton, whatever you choose to use is just fine. This way you don't have to run back and forth to the sink. Um, now I'm going to come back again with the dark again, and I want to build up those darker areas. I want those dark areas present, but not in the foreground. I want it understood that these darker areas are shadow. Now, the leaves are the same colors all over the shrub or the tree, but the shadow and the sunlight are what changes them. And I'm going to tap them down, I'm not blending them, but I am tapping them down. I want to pick up the excess dust. And since these leaves are in shadow, you're not going to see them defined. And wipe off my fingers again. I'm going to blow off the rest of the dust. Some people use a brush. I find that if I use the, my breath, uh, not having that issue of accidentally brushing my pastels. Now I'm going to bring back my little green and I'm going to make hash marks. 
going in all directions, no particular direction, um, maybe a quarter of an inch long. Now when I do the wall, I'm going to cover some of those leaves off, so I'll come back later again and do some more leaves. But and I won't be blending these out. These hash marks stand on their own and give us texture. And they don't go in any, it's not like fur, it's not like feathers. Um, they go in all directions because the leaves on a branch go in many directions. And it's something you can have a lot of fun with. Now I'm going to come back with the yellow. You've been wondering what I was going to do with that yellow. Well, it's not the sunshine. No, it's the reflection of the sun. No single direction. I'm crisscrossing. I'm hash marking. They're no. They're an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch long. We'll stop with that one. And now I'm going to move on to the brick. Now the brick is neither red nor orange. It will be a combination essentially of both. 
And there are also accent bricks filled in, which are blue or violet. I'm going with the blue because I like the blue vibrating off the orange. I'm going to bring the red across. Leaving the bird alone. I know I'll overlap the bird a bit in parts, but for the most part, okay. Now I'm going to bring in that orange. Because I want a red orange, and I don't have a red orange in my collection. Let's this is a way to blend. And I'm going to move my finger around. I'm overlapping the mulch. Now, I want this wall to be smoother. Not perfectly smooth, but smoother. So I'm going to have the leaves overlapping more than they do right now so that it's more evident. But here we go with that. And again, wipe off the fingers. I'm going to bring the blue in not just to make those little bricks, but to create some shadow. I'm going to use my cotton swab to blend in the shadow and the edging. I don't want there to be as much shadow as it appears it was going to be if I rubbed it in with my finger. And the cotton swab will pick up excess. And while my finger will as well, not quite in the same way. This way I'm causing it to fade. Now, I'm going to bring the blue back again. Ooh, a little too much. To put in those bricks, those blue colored bricks, I'm just drawing little lines using the edge Get that out of there. Let's see. Okay. So I have those decorative 
bricks in there. I'm going to bring back, I'm not going to smear it, I'm just going to tap them with my cotton swab. Because I want them to be there, but I don't want them to be that bright. It's just tapping. Can I get rid of those? Okay. I'm going to come back with the orange now and put some highlight in there, a little more light. Not blending them out. Now I'm going to come back down to the bottom where there's mulch. And I'm just going to create some mulch. Swirling motion. And I'm going to come in with a little bit of the blue to cast some shadow on the mulch. Tap that in. And I'm going to bring back that cotton swab. And I'm just going to blend those two together. So it's darker than the wall. Now, I'm going to come back up with the light green and bring it up over the wall. And the yellow. A little more over the wall. There we go. There's a little bit more over the wall. That looks better. And I'm going to lay out the grass. Now, there's some dirt patches, and I'm going to use the okra to pick up the dirt patches. The reason for my wanting to incorporate the okra, or I haven't incorporated it elsewhere, is because there's going to be a little bit of okra and orange in the bird, and I don't want it to jump out at me as being unreasonable or ugly or wrong. And then we bring in the light green. Okay, I'm going to use my finger to blend. I'm blending over the okra, but if, if we, um, I'm leaving enough there so that you can see that there's some dirt underneath the grass. I'm going to come back again, and I'm going to 
bring some of that green up over the mulch. Little bits of grass. Okay, and I'm going to have grass coming up. The whole thing isn't going to be covered in grass, but I want enough blades of grass to come up so that it's obvious that there are blades of grass. I'll overlay the yellow okra so you can get a better background for it. Then I'm going to bring in the yellow. Dashing up and down, creating blades of grass using the narrowest, sharpest part of the pastel. off my fingers again. And I'm going to work on um, I want to work on the bird now, the sandhill crane. It's got a, a reddish tawny feather, a red cap, a black beak, black or gray legs, and I'll work out with exciting these exciting aspects. I'm going to start with the black on the legs and I pull it down, keeping it very narrow and working with the very edge. Okay. And the beak. And I'm going to use my pencil for the eye. Now, I'm going to use the okra. Just blend this down, starting with the okra. Coming back with the white. Over the okra, I'm pushing it in. Because what I'm doing is creating a cream color. So I'm blending the white into the okra. create a cream color. I don't want it to be stark white. And I'm going to bring over the red using still the patch to do the cap. All sandhill cranes have a cap.
going to blend that down just a bit. There's a little bit of that um, brown that I created from the blue and the orange. And I'll put that there. And and I'm going to rub that in here. Okay. Now I'm going to use a little bit of the blue. This is the darker area. And a little bit of the orange to create that brown. Just blending it in. bring that back up and blend it up. See I can with the orange and the blue I've created a brown. I'm going to use my blending stump to drag some of those feathers down. I'm going to come back with the white and give it a touch of highlight. Following the feathers. Blend it up a bit. And a few more. Okay, in this case I'm following the directions of the feather, even though I can't see truly fine detail in the image. We're going with this bird has feathers and the feathers move in specific directions. Okay, now in doing the neck of the bird, I have gone over too far with the white. And I want to make sure that the wall is better defined. And then I'll come back again with the white. And a little bit there. And our sand hill crane is complete. So our piece is now complete. What I will do with it now is spray it with a fixative. Um, I use two kinds of fixatives. I use the Stenalier fixative and I use the Degas fixative. The Degas fixative comes in a standard spray bottle and I transfer it. I will stand up first. I transfer it to a fine mist bottle. Sorry to see all of me like this. Okay, whoops, can't find it. Okay. Um, this is what the bottle looks like. It's called Spectrafix Dega Fixative. It's natural, it's odor free. Um, it uses a milk casein formula and it is for pastels and charcs and pencils and charcoal. And I transfer it to the spray bottle, find the spray bottle that I got at Hobby Lobby. And they sell them also at um, other fine art stores and craft stores. I just spray it with the fine mist. The reason for transferring it is because that regular bottle will sometimes spit out um, little bottles, little bottles. <laughs> little puddles. Now, with the fine mist, that doesn't happen. This is completely covered. Uh, it is not going to make it completely rub free. You can still rub, move things around. You can come back and work on it some more if you'd like. And you let it dry. I allow about 20 minutes to let it dry. But for all today's project, this is now complete. And 
Here's my original. And here is our pastel. I hope that you'll give this project a try. I'm happy that I was able to share it with you all. And I look forward to having you in my adult art class, which is on the second Wednesday of each month through the Seminole County Library at this time. It's a Zoom class. And registration is required. A library card is required. But you are more than welcome to come back and take a look at my videos. I do a video for each class. And I am actually up to date. The next video will be in January after my next class. And we'll be working with um, colored pencils. Thank you once again for joining me. I had a great time. And remember, the materials are listed in the description below.